everyone, this is Pause or Repeat. Here we figure out whether a game is really worth your time and money. Today's game is Diablo 4. Diablo 4 is the latest in Blizzard's action RPG series. The series has been at a low point for a while. The last game that was released was Diablo Immortal, which had very mixed reviews. This was due to it being initially made as a mobile game, which long-term fans of the series were not receptive to. But does the series have any new tricks up its sleeve, or is it more of the same? Let's start by overviewing the gameplay. The gameplay of Diablo 4 is similar to previous entries. You'll go through procedurally generated maps, killing enemies, and getting experience points while completing questlines. Using a combination of leveling up and obtaining gear, your character's power will increase to better kill and survive the onslaught of demons. On your first character, you'll also be going through the campaign, and on subsequent characters, it will be optional for you. The big difference between this game and previous ones is that the game is now an MMO, or massively multiplayer online game. Previous games required you to add people to your party in order to see them, whereas now you'll more often see people in the open world without having to group up with them. And how is the story looking this time? This time, the story is following a demon named Lilith, as she tries to gain a foothold in the mortal realm of Sanctuary. Her objective is to gain forces to fight against Heaven and Hell, both of which have been in an eternal conflict. Her being the creator of Sanctuary, she feels like she has a right to dominion over it. And of course, humans are stuck in the middle. It is up to your character, alongside others, to stop Lilith. To sum up, Diablo 4 goes back to the feel of previous games prior to the series' low point, while adding in modern gameplay elements. But now the question still stands. Pause or repeat? Diablo 4 is a peculiar case of a game because you have Blizzard who's been taking L's left and right and then they come out with this game and you know, it's a pretty good game, but it has its flaws. The story, for example, is it starts off pretty good. You know, like they, they got an interesting villain, you know, who kind of has some things going on that are interesting uh, for her compared to some previous villains. Uh, but then about halfway through the story, things just take a nosedive and yeah. it goes terribly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, Lilith seemed promising. I mean, I, my first reaction was I'm a big heavy metal fan. So like I listened to Chelsea Grin's like EP Lilith. So I kind of got excited to see like this kind of villain come to the video game world. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be really cool, really badass. And then, yeah, as you start to say, you know, you start to get introduced to this character. But this main antagonist is behind a red curtain during the majority of the game until like probably the final ending, which the ending is uh, very disappointing in my opinion, because it kind of leads on to potential expansions in the future, which is, I think this is the thing that's not being discussed enough in Diablo 4, which is this idea of microtransactions and expansions. Uh, this is nothing new with Blizzard. I mean, we know that they created, you know, Overwatch and World of Warcraft, and they really want to bank on, you know, the cosmetic gear to kind of, you know, hopefully get even more revenue in. But I think that's been the biggest problem with the game is that they focus so, so much on all the visual details, the graphics, and et cetera, but that they kind of completely you know, crumbled a piece of paper into a ball and threw it right in the trash can. They didn't really care to bring you that story-driven content. Or it's just like, again, it's like when you played Call of Duty back in the day, like a decade ago, and they started coming out with these DLCs, you thought that was cool at first, and then you started to feel like, wasn't that supposed to be a part of the game that I just paid for? I paid $75 for this game. Why oh, yeah, do exactly. I have to buy an expansion to finish the ending for Diablo 4? That's my biggest issue with the game. Exactly, like that's the same sort of thing that they just did with Overwatch 2, where they're like, okay, you know, the PvE with all the story-based missions, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. It's not profitable for us to just do that anymore. So instead, we're going to, you know, chunk up what we did make so far, and we're going to put that in a battle pass that you have to, you have to purchase right. every season. And that's just ridiculous, because it's like, you promised that for that game, and then you're not going to deliver it. And it's kind of a similar thing with this game, where, like you said, the ending just feels completely incomplete. Uh, yeah. Where, you know, you get to the ending and you're expecting this grand finale and, and it's just setting it up for an expansion. 
And exactly. Then when the expansion comes out, you're going to have to pay for, for that continuation of the story, I guarantee it. And think about what Cyberpunk 20, 2077 wants for their DLC expansion. I believe it's $30 right now. You don't yeah. think Diablo 4 is going to match that? I oh, mean, they, I Cyberpunk is kind of testing the waters, right? I mean, usually most DLCs would be like 15 to 20 bucks, and now everything's kind of slowly increasing. Uh, you know, let's add another $10. Let's, let's test the water with gamers and see if they'll even dive in. But to be fair to Diablo 4, the five classes are a lot of fun. They're really cool. I think that's what makes the game very special is that you get the builds and the upgrades are impeccable it's it's really well done but then again no, when it comes to, when it comes to the question of pause or repeat i'm starting to think 50 50 because 50 percent of me is like i'd go back because i'd want to keep playing as the different classes but then a half of me is like dude I, I play 80 hours into the game do i really want to go through this all over again knowing how the ending's like for me diablo 4 is a pause that's fair. I think that uh, I'm kind of on a similar page with you. Like, I have a storied history with the series. I grew up playing Diablo 2, you know, back when we even only had dial-up. So if someone called us, <laughs> you know, I get disconnected and, you know, have to start all over on, on uh, you know, the grind on, on whatever part of the game I was on. Exactly. But, uh, like you said, all the classes, they're pretty fun. I think they struck a good balance with the gameplay here between the the more casual nature of Diablo 3 and the yeah. more the more hard and you know tough experience that Diablo 2 is uh it, you know especially if you go back and play uh the the resurrected or one that right. came out like last year um like that game's still hard and uh that's a that's a selling point of it really but i think they they made a good balance with this one where it's still hard and difficult especially if you're playing on that hardcore mode where you only have one life exactly uh, so yeah i mean I but the question be, for yeah. you though henrik the wreck is is it a pause or a repeat well see that's the thing i, I don't think it'd be a game that i want to put as my main game so for me personally it's gonna be a pause also <laughs> it's a pause i mean just because we're saying pause doesn't mean it's a bad game it's just again guys we're a repeat means it's so freaking good that you're going to want to keep playing it over and over and over again. So again, if maybe, you're a big... maybe the uh, expansion when that comes out, you know, it might entice people to play it again, uh, depending on the or price, it might frustrate obviously. gamers <laughs> or that. Yeah. 